This last winter I was doing one of the boat shows at a Bass Pro Shops out in Denver and I was talking to some guys who fish Lake McConaughey down in Nebraska and they were telling me about this technique that they use for fishing flooded timbers for walleyes. So I thought to myself, you know that, that should work up in Lake Oahe, it's at all time highs. So I took the technique and fished in a big tournament last week and it worked out really well. Chase Parsons took first, I took second in a big FLW event up out of Pierce, South Dakota. So my buddy Jim heard about it here and he decided to come down and see this technique. So what we're going to show you today is how to fish timber for walleyes with spinnerbaits. That's right, spinnerbaits. We're going to show you how to get the next bite. Lake Oahe in South Dakota is one of Keith Cavias' favorite places to fish for walleyes. We're here. Nice. <laughs> And though this may be familiar water, it's unique in that as a reservoir, its levels are continuously changing. The weapons of mass destruction. Which is exactly why Keith is so excited to be out here with fellow tournament angler Jim Carroll. You're kidding, right? <laughs> to demonstrate a totally new take on fishing the thick and complex tree structure now laying submerged deep along its expanded shorelines. Right here is what we're looking for, right there in the tops. You can see it on the down scan too. What I found is on these real deep trees, these trees that are down about 33, 32 feet, you don't catch as many fish out here, but it look, it seems like some bigger fish will slide into these deep trees and hold on it. One quick but important tip about this presentation Oh man, you're quick! <laughs> is to get the walleye up and out of the trees as quickly as possible. Well, they ski right up, don't they? You don't give them a chance to fight too much. You kind of got to get on them to get them out of the trees. But these trees here are 30 feet down, so once you get a little ways above them, you don't need to horse them too much in. But anytime you get that mouth pinned open, they are going to come up typically. Yeah, but this one's staying down actually, which is a really good sign. This can be a... Really? Oh, there he is. I see him. What does he look like? Water ski. Ready? Yeah, I'm gonna get him. He's well, pretty good yeah. up there, actually. I Jim. guess he got better. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Look at that mouth. Get him. There we go. <laughs> Spinner fish. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. <laughs> That's a good fish. Got him on no chartreuse. That's a nice fish. Tree fish. Those hooks hold. Yeah, yeah, that one big hook in there. Look at that thing. That's a good one, huh? Pretty. It's an Oahe over there. Can only keep two over 20 here, so this would definitely be one of those. Look at how fat he is all the way down to the tail. Yeah, Very nice. They're eating. Yeah, <laughs> they're eating. Right now they're eating spinner baits. <laughs> I've been fishing these trees on these flooded Missouri River reservoirs for a long time. The situation we've got is we've gone from record low water levels to now record high water levels. And that water stayed down for a number of years and allowed the trees to grow up along the shoreline. So there's kind of two key areas that we kind of look for along the edge of a big flat. In other words, where a big shelf would come out into the reservoir. Lots of trees grow up on those flat spots. It's very easy to make long, long passes through those trees. Another spot that I like to look for is where there's a sharp break into shore especially where there's a cove and on the back ends of those coves many times there'll be a bunch of trees that grew up now those are a little tougher to fish because we got to dive in there with the boat usually they're typically not very big patches we dive in there with our boat drag our lures through and then we want to figure eight around and go right back through one thing I've learned on this trip is you know traditionally we use crankbaits over the tops of these trees and we catch fish but we lose a lot of lures every time that rod goes back probably gonna lose that lure this spinnerbait technique behind lead core allows us to actually fish down through the trees and we are catching tons and tons of fish. It's a walleye. Is he coming? Uh, he is. Yeah. Walleye, isn't that it? Nice fish, yeah. Get him, Jim. There he nice. goes. <laughs> Swing him in here. Good fish. <laughs> yeah. What color is that? <laughs> I think it's like a salt and pepper kind of thing. Yeah. Shad, I think they actually call it. Well, I liked it. Look at that nice fish though. I think that's one of those perfect uh, Oahe slots there. Yeah, just, it is. Just a little here under 20 inches, but big and fat. You can tell they're sitting in these trees just gobbling on stuff. Oh, good fish. All right, let's get back down to the trees. The next bite is presented by Mercury. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker boats. Fish the finest. 
Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley. Catch more fish.